Okay, everybody, we're going to start uh, the building process by building the frame and attaching it to the base. So gather the parts you see here just to make sure you've, you've chosen the right spacers. These spacers should measure about 1.45 inches. Don't know if it's that easy to see on the camera. If you're working with the metric system, it'll be about 35 millimeters. Um, gather these parts and we will start the assembly process next. Here is a small screwdriver. Before I begin putting together the kit, I've poured all of my hardware into a bowl. I'm going to place all of my screws and bolts in a bowl. I don't want to lose them. Now there are, here are the two side pieces and I want to just point out to everybody that one side there are countersinks for the flathead screws and on the other side there is not a countersink. So make sure when you're assembling this, these are two mirror images, the countersink is going to be on the outside. Now I would start by grabbing one of the side pieces, grabbing the base with the tabs, and you can start inserting the tabs into their corresponding slots. This is a tab and slot construction. These side pieces go in, as you can see, like this. Make sure you get all the tabs to align properly. And put that in like that. Now once you have done this, we can start populating it with the small nuts. Now this is a bit of a tedious task, but there aren't too many of these. And the rest of the kit goes together very easily. So we'll just kind of work our way through this. But slide a nut into that hole. It's very good to, this is where the tricky part is. You want to hold this nut with your fingers. And now just put in one of the screws. And just screw it down like this. If the screw has a little trouble finding its way into the nut, just wiggle it around a little bit and it'll go right in. Now don't tighten it up too much right now. Let's get all of the nuts and bolts into their proper holes and we'll take it from the next step. Okay, once you've put in all of these five screws, you can tighten them up and you will have put together the lower part. The spacers go in the exact same way. I'm going to slide a nut into its slot. Remember, you have to get the flat of the nut to go into that slot. And I'll put in this upper one first. You just, these two tabs fit into their slots. And then you put your screw in, just like you did with the other ones. You can tighten that up. So now you just put in the other two spacers and we'll take it from there. Once you've put in all the spacers with their nuts, the next step is going to be to put this side piece up onto these spacers and then put the rest of the nuts in. Now, I find it impossibly difficult to hold the nuts into these slots once this piece is on. It's easy when it's open-ended and you can put your hand like this to hold it. But now it's going to become very difficult to hold the nuts. So what I'm going to do is a technique where I'm going to just temporarily tape the nuts in place and it will make life a lot easier. Once I put all the screws in, I'll remove the tape and we'll go on to the next step. Here I'm using scotch tape just to temporarily hold the nuts in place. I just want to point out that this upper edge is going to be going flush to the other side piece. So don't let the tape go above this edge. So I've made sure the tape is a little below this edge. This is the top of the tape. Just so it's holding the nut, I only have the tape on one side. I just need to hold those nuts in place until this is over. So don't make a big deal out of it. With the nuts all taped into place, and I 
I'm telling you right now, this is probably one of the more difficult steps in building the model. It gets much easier after this is over. But these nuts are sort of precariously held in place by the tape. So I don't want to pick this up if I don't have to. So now I'm going to very carefully just line this up with all the tabs. Now make sure every piece finds the tab that it needs to go into. And then you can start putting in the screws. Now these spacers, you may have to do a little bit of alignment to get them to go. There's quite a lot of tabs that have to be put in, in, in place right now. So just take your time. No need to rush. And you'll very slowly but surely get everything in place. Before I start putting in the screws, I just want to make absolutely certain that all the tabs are in their corresponding slots. So just carefully rotate the model and just make sure that you've achieved that flush tight fit all along the way. And then you can begin screwing in the screws. Now the tape may not hold the nuts perfectly so I still like to hold them with my fingers when I'm putting in the screws. Once again, if the screws don't perfectly fit into the nuts, just wiggle them around a little. You may have to back the screw out a little to get it to go, but sooner or later you'll be able to get it to fit. This nut's a little bit misaligned, so just make sure you line them all up, and then it'll go. Again, I put all the screws in a little loose until I got all of them in, and now that they're all in, I'm just going to go around and sequentially tighten up everything. As I mentioned, once the nuts are in place, you're over the danger zone, so to speak, in terms of losing hardware. Everything is going to fit really nicely now. Now once all of those are tightened, we can come around and just peel off the tape now. Because we definitely don't want tape on our final model. So peel off all the tape and we'll go on to the next step. For the next step, we're going to attach the frame to the base. Now if you pick the base up and flip it over, you'll see that there are counterboard holes on the bottom. These may be countersunk. Uh, I'm not sure what the final product will have. The, these are round-headed 832 screws. You may have flat-headed screws, and these may be countersunk. It's not really important. Now, you'll notice that there's a little asymmetry here. The distance between this hole and the base on the, and the edge is closer than it is on this side, and it is in this orientation that we're going to mount it with the taller side of the frame facing the shorter distance of the hole to the base. And to finish this, we'll, we're simply going to slide this into place. This should just snap in. It's a tight fit, but that should be no problem. Just snap this in. And now we will put these 832 screws in. Make sure the heads get below the surface. And again, the shorter the distance, the taller. We'll put it in like this. Once this is in, we will tighten it with the nuts. Okay, once you've got the screws coming out, you can come in here with these nuts and put them in place. Let me see if I can see if the video can pick that up. And then a little tight. You may have to take a little effort to get those nuts started, but once you get those the two nuts in, you can come along with a screwdriver and tighten everything up from the bottom and everything. And then we'll go on to the next step.
The next thing we're going to build is what I call the ladder. Here are the five pieces that you need. The construction technique is almost identical to the frame that we just made. I just want to point out that the spacer for the ladders are, are for the ladder is wider than it is for the frame that we just completed. So just as a point of reference, the total length of this is about 1.75 inches. And if you're working with metric, it is about 45 millimeters. So as opposed to the spacers last time, which were somewhat shorter. Okay, same method of construction. Just make sure the countersunk holes are on the outside. And when this is finished, we'll go on to the next step. Once again, I used the tape technique to hold the nuts in place. I've put in all the screws now, but I haven't tightened any of them. And I'm going to now take off the tape And to do the final tightening, I'm going to lay this flat on the table to make sure that the piece comes out perfectly flat before I tighten them up. So I would recommend you do the same. Okay, once this is completed, you'll see how strong it is. We'll set that aside and we'll work on the final part that goes together with these nuts and bolts. Okay, let's start off by doing the same thing we've been doing. Again, notice there's countersunk holes on the outside of these pieces. So these are going to go on the outside and we will use the same technique. I will put the nut inside the slot. Again, make sure the countersink is on the outside. And I'll put the spacer in here. We'll follow it up with the screw. Now do this on the remaining two spacers, put those in, and then we'll take it from there. Once you've got the spacers on one side, I have once again have taped the nuts temporarily onto the other side because it's pretty difficult to hold them in place. We'll now take these two pieces of wood and slide them into each other. And then you can carefully insert it into here. Let me make it easier to see. You want to go into the second step until it goes all the way down like that. And then again, make sure the countersunk holes are on the outside and then put this in place. And now just very carefully line up all the spacers with their respective notches and just put the screws in. Again, before tightening up all these screws, it's a good idea to lay this, lay this flat on the table when you're tightening it so it will be perfectly square. Now, since this part of it sticks out below the surface, you'll have to overhang that a little from the table. And then once it's flat on the table, you can tighten up these screws and everything will be flat. The next thing we're going to assemble is what's called the Pegasus stand. This will hold the Pegasus figure onto the model. Now the construction method is the same as we've seen before. These spacers are similar to the ones that were used on the bottom frame, but again, let's just make sure you're using the right one. These should measure about 1.4 inches or so in length. If you're using metric, it should be about 35, 36 millimeters. Uh, again, technique is exactly the same. No need to go through it again. Just remember, there are countersunk holes on one side of these parts, so just make sure they go together in the proper manner. Okay, I've put all the nuts and screws into this part, but I've kept everything loose because I want to make sure I put it up against the table before I tighten these screws so everything remains nice and square. So I'm going to push these down onto the table and I will just tighten these screws while it's in this position. Once you've put it all together, you can set it aside for now. The next part of the construction of the kit, we're going to concentrate on the ladder that we built previously. The other two parts you can set aside for now. Rummage through the kit of parts and look for this 
little wooden dowel called the insertion tool. We'll talk about that in a second. And also find this package of uh, 12 tooth gears and axles and washers and other parts. You'll see that in the kit. And I'm going to now empty the contents of this bag into the bowl just so I don't lose anything. There are a lot of little pieces in here that uh, you don't want to lose. Now, before we start uh, constructing, let me just say we're going to be putting gears in these middle holes. This one, this one, this one, and this one for now. And the other ones we're going to work with in a minute. Now, let's just look at the parts that are in that bag. There are 12 tooth gears in the part in the bag, I should say. There are these axles. They're all the same, so do not, do not worry about which one you pick. They're a quarter inch dowel that have an axle cap glued onto the one side of them. There are wooden washers that have a quarter inch hole in the middle. There are O-rings. There are these little rubber O-rings. These There are three different O-ring sizes used in the kit. These ones are for quarter inch shafts. And there are these nylon flanged washers. Now there are two different size, sizes of these washers used in the kit. These ones have a quarter inch hole in the middle for the quarter inch shafts. Now the one thing I want to mention is when you use these uh, flanged washers, you must make sure that they go into the wooden hole properly. You have to make absolutely certain that they go flush up against the wood and the smaller diameter right under the flange right here this smaller diameter should go completely inside the wood like that now construction is incredibly simple right now we have the insertion tool that will be used to help us put the o-rings on so the insertion tool uh, you'll see how to use it it has two holes one for the smaller o-rings and one for the bigger o-rings and it's very simple so to get going with this construction just grab one of the gears slide the shaft through the gear and now take one of the nylon flanged washers let's start with this second hole over from uh, the right I'm going to make sure it goes in nice and flush and now just simply slide the shaft through all the way take another nylon flanged washer on this side and just once again make sure it seats itself properly then follow it up with a wooden washer like that and now one of the o-rings now the o-rings can be slid on it helps if you have some fingernails but uh, you can get the o-ring started you can kind of roll it down the shaft like this and now to properly seat it, use the smaller hole, let me just say bigger hole, smaller hole, use the smaller hole and just push the o-ring down. You can even twist the insertion tool a little bit until the o-ring is fully seated like that. And then you will notice the gear spins nice and freely. Now we're going to populate all of the, these three remaining holes with the gears and just you just have to make sure that when you put the gears in that they mesh with each other like that. So put all of these gears in place and then we will go to the next step. Once you've put these four gears in place, if you rotate them you can see that they are now meshed together and they're spinning nicely. Now. Since this kit is made of wood, and we, are, we do have a lot of gears, it's a good thing to do is to lubricate this mechanism with something. But obviously you wouldn't want to use oil or anything like that. Now what I have found that works terrific is uh, talcum powder. So I'm going to sprinkle talcum powder on the wood occasionally during the building of this kit. And to do it, I usually go into the bathroom and just go over the, the, um, ba you know, the bathtub so that I don't make a big mess because the stuff does tend to, to go everywhere. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to shut off the video, go into the bathroom, sprinkle some talcum powder over the, over the bathtub, and then I'm going to come back. Okay, so I've sprinkled some talcum powder on the entire uh, ladder structure here. And then what you basically do is rotate it a few times and then blow off the talcum powder. So there's just some, just some remnants of it. 
and we'll be using the talcum powder throughout the build. Okay, the next step we're going to attach the ladder to the frame and uh, take the frame back out and make sure you've oriented it so that the long part, the higher part of the frame is on the right side. And we're going to be placing the ladder right basically in this part of the frame. Now to do it, we'll make use of the remaining pieces that were in that little bag of parts. So we're first going to put nylon flanged washers on either side of the frame like this. Again, make sure they go into their holes and then you can slide the ladder in place. You can place it like this for now just to hold it. Take the last shaft that was in that bag and the last 12 tooth gear. Slide it like this and now make sure you put another flanged nylon washer down the shaft with the flanged part on this side. And now insert everything through these holes. Now you're going through a bunch of things so make sure everything is lined up properly and make sure the gears mesh with each other as well. So let's just get those gears to mesh and once you get everything in place come around and make sure all of these nylon flanned washers are in the proper position and they're seated properly up against the frame. Follow it up on the other side with another nylon flanged washer and once again make sure it goes in. Sometimes they don't quite, it's easy to have it so that it doesn't go all the way in. Follow that up by the wooden washer and then the o-ring to complete the assembly. Again you can slide these o-rings in or you can use the insertion tool to sort of sock them down. So once that assembly is complete, you will have the ladder like this. And again, if you rotate the gears, you should start to see some motion. In this next step, we're going to attach the Pegasus stand to the end of the ladder here. Grab the bag that contains these parts. You'll notice, let me take these bags and put it into our trusty bowl here. You'll notice that this bag contains two 12 tooth gears that have small holes. Now you'll notice one of the holes lines up perfectly behind one of the teeth of the gears and the other hole lines up perfectly in between the two teeth of the gears. You'll see why this is the case in a few minutes. And you'll see the rest of the parts are here. These shafts are a little bit different than the other ones we used in that they have a very thin flat cap on the end of them. So we will now start construction but before that I want to run the 256 brass screw into this hole ahead of time and create threads in there. That will make the final assembly of the kit much simpler. So in the next step we'll first do that. I'm going to go to the bag that contains all the, fig the parts that make the Pegasus figure and I'm going to remove one of the brass 256 screws for the purpose of threading the inside of these holes. So just take that screw out. I'm going to put it right back in the bag as soon as I, I do this operation. But all I want to do basically is screw this into the gear And I'm just screwing this into the wooden gear to establish the threads ahead of time. During the final assembly, it's going to be a little tricky to try to thread these screws into the gear while it's mounted on the kit. So just do this to both gears and then put the screw right back in the bag. And don't lose anything. The next thing I'm going to do is attach one of these 12 tooth gears that has the hole in it to the ladder and I'm going to first look at the position here. So holding the ladder like this we're going to go into this hole here. I've chosen the gear that has the hole in between the two teeth but it doesn't matter which one you pick. Now to do this assembly we're going to insert the axle. Now notice this axle just has a very flat uh, end cap to it. We we'll slide that on and then what follows is when you flip it over we're going to first slide on a wooden washer 
Then this is a non-flange. This is a regular flat nylon washer. That goes on next. And then we'll slide the flange nylon washer on that with the flange facing outward like this. Now we slide this assembly into the ladder or the Pegasus stand, I should say. This is not the ladder. And then on the other side, and you're probably used to seeing this sort of thing before, we'll put the other flanged nylon washer. We will put the wooden washer, and then we will place the O-ring on top. Oops. Again, these O-rings can be rolled on if you have some fingernails like I happen to have, it goes easier. If not, always use the insertion tool to sock it down. Once you've put that gear in place, just give it a little rotation to make sure it's good. And we'll go on to the next gear in a second. In the next part of the construction, we're going to place this gear onto the Pegasus stand. Now it's important that when we place this gear onto the Pegasus stand, the two holes line up with each other. So this tooth has to go into that trough with these two holes lined up. Now in addition to that, we're going to have to assemble everything together onto the ladder at the same time. So it's very simple, I just want to make sure we're we're all on the same page here. So we're going to slide the shaft into the gear. There are four nylon uh, flanged washers that we'll be using. I'm going to slide one of them onto this gear, onto this axle with the flange facing outward. Now, let me just move the stand into position. Make sure we can see it on the camera. Now we're going to place do it like this. I'm going to put nylon flanged washers on the two outside parts of the Pegasus stand as such. And then we're going to slide the Pegasus stand into the ladder, as you can see here. The next thing we're going to do is grab the shaft. Now remember, it already has another flanged washer on this side. And I'm going to slide it through the entire assembly. And now this is the important part. It has to mesh with the two gears on either side and the hole has to be lined up. Now you may have to rotate a few things to get these gears to mesh. Okay. Once you've got the gear fully in there, make sure these two holes are lined up and then you can finish the assembly. Now again, make sure these flanged washers are fully seated. The outside of the axle gets another flanged, flanged washer here. And again, just make sure it goes all the way in, followed by the wooden washer, followed again by the O-ring to make sure everything stays together. Slide that O-ring in place. Use the insertion tool to sock it down. When the assembly is complete, this is what it should look like. You should see the Pegasus stand attached to the ladder. These two holes of these two gears should be lined up and everything should be as shown right here in the video. Okay. You can just set this aside like this for now and we'll go on to the next step. The next thing that we're going to add to this model is shaft number three. Now shaft number three is, goes right in this hole and if you look closely at the hole you can see there are three rings that go around the hole. Your kit may have crosses but either way there's going to be three symbols that indicates shaft three. Now what you want to do next is find the package that contains shaft three. Now similarly on this shaft, we'll come in close so the camera can see it, there are also three rings on this indicating that this is shaft three. So let's open up 
the bag of parts and put it in the bowl again. I have to admit, I do like using the bowl. It seems to be a pretty good way of doing it. So um, this is how uh, shaft three goes in. Once again, we, we have some of the, uh, the um, flanged nylon washers, but these ones are larger than the ones we've been using. Uh, so these are gonna go right in here, similar to what we've been doing. And uh, we also have some washers, some wooden washers that have crosses in them. And you'll notice that shaft three has a cross section that is a cross. And uh, here's how this one goes together. It's very simple. We're going to take the 12 tooth gear and we're going to slide the shaft into it just like this. And the next thing that we are going to do is put three of these wooden washers with the crosses in them. We're going to slide those into position. The next thing we're going to do is put on a nylon uh, flanged washer, the big size, and put it in again with the flange facing up. And now we're going to thread it through the hole for shaft three. Now once we get it through shaft three, we're going to come to the other side of the model, as shown. We're going to put the other flanged nylon washer and again make sure it butts up against the face of the model. We're going to now put in this big 24 tooth gear followed by another wooden cross washer and now an o-ring. Now this o-ring is a little bigger than the ones we've been used to as well so we're now going to have to put the o-ring on. Now once again, we can use the insertion tool, but this time we'll use the big hole. And let's sock it down by really twisting it nicely. Okay. So once this is assembled, this shaft is now on the model. Now I'm going to, I think, put another shaft on before I use more talcum powder, but I am going to be adding some talcum powder to this setup. The next part of the assembly is a bit involved, but it's still pretty easy to do, but you need all these parts. We're going to need this link, which is the bottom part of the four bar mechanism. And we're going to need the bag, which contains the parts for shaft two. Again, shaft two has two little symbols on it that indicate it's shaft two. Now I'm going to, once again, pour out the contents of the bag into the bowl. And I just want to point out that once again we have gears and spacers and stuff like that. We have our flanged nylon washers, but we also have a flat, a flat nylon washer with a three-eighths of an inch hole in the middle. So just be aware that's there's only a couple of things like this in the kit. So we're going to be focusing on shaft number two now. And we're going to start by taking shaft number two. Once again, you can see there are two little rings on the shaft indicating it's shaft number two. And we're going to take the 18 tooth gear and we're going to slide it onto the shaft just like this. The next thing we're going to put on is one of these three quarter inch diameter wooden washers, spacers that have the cross in it. So we're going to slide that on next. Just have to line up the cross and slide it all the way down. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place the flat nylon washer. This is not the flanned washer, but it's just the flat nylon washer. We're going to slide that on as well. And then we are going to put on the flanged nylon washer. So again, this is the flanged one with the flanged facing up. And now we're going to come over here to the frame. And this assembly is going to go into this hole here. However, it also must go through this hole of the link. So we're going to lift the ladder up. I'm going to hold it kind of precariously vertically 
And I'm now going to fit the ladder in right here, lining up all the holes. And I'm going to slide shaft number two through the link, through the frame on the other side. And I'm going to place this ladder back down a little bit. And I am now going to make sure that the 18 tooth gear is meshing with the 12 tooth gear above. Now I just want to point out the, the ladder is never going to be this low when the kit is finished but right now if you lower the ladder all the way this gear will also mesh with this gear and now everything is locked up and can't move so don't try to move it if it's in this position because it won't move. Now I'm going to turn the model around so we can work on the other side. Now, the first thing I'm going to put on is the other flanged nylon washer and that's going to go there. The next thing that goes on is this 12 tooth gear. We're going to basically create what's called in engineering a compound gear. We're going to put this 12 tooth gear in here and it meshes with the gear below. So just want to make sure you may have to rotate some things to get those teeth to mesh but that's what we're looking for that has to mesh. We're now going to put one of these spacers with the cross in it and then the assembly is completed by putting the 24 tooth gear on here. This assembly right here these two gears locked together is called a compound gear and, and in, in, a, in a machine they would be a monolithic thing. It wouldn't be consisting of three things, one gear spacer and another gear. It would be one gear. But anyway, let's complete this assembly. We now finish it with another wooden washer with the cross in the middle and then we will put on the o-ring. The o-ring again can be rolled on up to a point and then it is completed with the insertion tool. Okay. Now flipping the model back around, you can see if we pick up the ladder, we have some action right now. Now, I want everybody to understand this kit might be very stiff. Do not try do not try to rotate this at this stage in in the kit's construction, okay? It might be too stiff and it might not work. You might break something. I guarantee you when this kit is finished the action will be incredibly smooth but we just have to make sure we do this in the proper order. The next step is very simple. You need these five parts. It's a quarter inch dowel. It's two wooden washers that are a half inch outside diameter, quarter inch inside, and two of the small o-rings for quarter inch shaft. Basically we're going to attach the link we put in on the previous step to the bottom of the Pegasus stand right here like that. So to do it probably the easiest way is let's start by rolling one of the o-rings onto the end of the shaft and it really doesn't have to go in any particular place just sort of near the end of the shaft is a good place for it. So I'm just going to put it like that and then slide one of the wooden washers onto the shaft like this. Now I'll just put these two parts over here for now. Just grab the model, line up the link on the bottom with the Pegasus stand and slide the dowel through this hole and just slide it all the way through until it comes out the other side and then just slide on the wooden washer and put the o-ring on. You don't need to use the insertion tool for this particular step. We want to keep this relatively loose. We don't really want it particularly tight. Now when this is complete, or when you put that pin in, it completes what's called a four bar linkage in engineering. The four bars in this particular case are from here to here is one of the links its parallel link is the ladder on top from this point to this point and the two other links are this point and this point and the frame itself this point and this point this forms a parallelogram 
and no matter what angle this takes on, this remains a parallelogram. And if you notice, the Pegasus stand always remains, this part of it always remains horizontal, and this part of it always remains vertical. So as you crank this mechanism and the Pegasus moves up and down, it will always stay in the same orientation. Okay, we'll take the next step in a second. Okay, the next step of the construction here is going to be mounting the handle onto the kit. So if the handle is shaft one, it goes right in here. And here is the package. And you'll notice again, look for the shaft that has one symbol on it. And once you find that bag, I'm going to again empty it into the bowl. Don't want to lose any of these little things. Now, all of the components in here are going to look more or less familiar to things we've already used, with the one exception being the handle. You'll notice there's a small screw and nut already on the handle. So just make sure that nut doesn't come off. So let's just start construction. It's very simple. The first thing we're going to do is slide one of these wooden washers that has a cross in it right onto the shaft. This is, again, shaft one and it is followed by one of the flanged nylon washers and again the flange is facing up just like we've been doing and now you can slide it right into this part of the frame now let me flip the frame to the other side we'll work on it like this so the camera can see it what follows next as you probably have already guessed is the other nylon flanged washer make sure again it butts up against the frame and now you have to put on three of these wooden washers this is to give us the proper spacing So once you've put on those three spacers, what's followed is a small eight tooth gear. It meshes with the gear next to it, so rotate the shaft until you get proper meshing of the two gears. You then put in another spacer washer on top, followed by the handle. The handle's orientation can go any way you want for now. In fact, I'm gonna put it this way so that the top of the, the head of the screw is facing up. That's just going to make tightening it much easier. Now once this is together, I recommend that you squeeze this, not with a huge amount of force, but squeeze this together to get most of the slop out of it, and then you can tighten up this screw. I find that you don't have to tighten it a huge amount, but a, you know, snug it down and give it a little twist. And now we have the handle. If I pick the, if I pick this up and hold it and rotate the handle, you'll see that everything is starting to move really nicely. Now, if when you put this kit together, there's any difficulty in turning the handle, don't force it. Now would be a good time actually to go back into the bathroom, hold this over the tub, sprinkle some talcum powder over the whole thing and blow it off. I think I'm gonna do that before I finish the rest of the construction. The final shaft that we're going to put into the kit is shaft number four, which is gonna go right in this hole right there in, in the model frame. These are the parts we need. Now you need the t this really big gear. This is the 48 tooth gear. You need the wheel. You'll notice that the wheel has a counterboard hole in it. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. So let's just put these two gears and wheel to the side for now. And here is the bag containing the components we're gonna need for this operation. So I'm gonna do my usual transfer into the bowl and once again just make sure you have the right shaft it should have four symbols on it for shaft number four and um, let's start the construction it's quite simple we're going to start by sliding shaft number four which you'll also notice has a flat thin end cap on it 
and it's going to go into the big gear. You'll also notice that both the wheel and the gear have a small pin sticking out of it. That's for a link to go on to, which we'll, we'll do in a few seconds. Now, we now want to slide the flange nylon washer with the flange on top, as usual, and then it's going to go right into this hole. Now remember, it has to mesh with the gear on the right, so make sure you may have to rotate some things to get it all to, me to mesh. So just make sure it goes in there. And again, always make sure the nylon flange washer is flush. Now, you may have to move the whole mechanism, the whole four bar linkage mechanism up a little so that it doesn't interfere with the gear. On the other side, very simple, the other flanged nylon washer goes on and then the wheel. Now before you put this wheel on, make sure the pin on this wheel lines up with the pin on the big 48 tooth gear. It's important that those pins be lined up with each other. So just make sure the two pins, the pin on that side matches with the pin on this side. Since it's a cross shaft, they'll, you, know, you may have to rotate it 90 degrees to make that happen, but it's not going to be a big deal. So before I put the rest on, I just want to make sure the two pins are lined up. And now this is a little bit of a tricky operation. With this shaft in here, I now have to get one of the O-rings on to that cross shaft inside that pocket. Okay, once you've inserted the shafts and the wheels, and it's now time to get the O-ring on there, it might be easiest to just put the model down on its side gently and put this O-ring on. Now, I find that sometimes using the screwdriver makes it a bit easier. So you can kind of roll the O-ring around pretty easily actually with the screwdriver. This technique works very well. And um, once you have it on there, you can use the insertion tool to sock it down. So there you have it. Let me make sure the camera can pick it up. There's the O-ring sitting inside that little cavity. Okay. It's now time to put the links onto the kit. This is a very simple step. So let's start by grabbing one of the small wooden washers. This has the half inch outside diameter, quarter inch inside diameter. Lift the four bar linkage mechanism up. Let me slide this a little bit more into the camera's view. And just slide this washer over the cross shaft that's coming out of the, of the bottom link. And now simply slide, now you'll notice the links have a quarter inch hole on one side and a one eighth inch hole on the other. The quarter inch hole goes on top and the one eighth inch hole goes into the big gear on the bottom, the pin that's sticking out the big gear. So there you see it, very simple, right? Now we will follow this up by putting another one of these washers over here and taking the quarter inch o-ring that's going to slide onto this shaft just going to use my fingers to slide the o-ring on because I don't even want it to be particularly tight the bottom gets the small wooden washer We'll slide that over the link like that. And now we use the really small O-ring. You haven't used any of these before. There's only two of these, I believe, in the kit. And those slide over here. Again, I'm going to just use my fingernails to roll it on. I don't need it or really want it to be particularly tight. So when it's done, you have a link going on to the gear and there. And now you flip the model around and you do the exact same thing on this side, connecting it to the wheel on the bottom. I 
I've placed both links on, so if you flip the kit around, you'll notice that both links are in place. And I didn't mention, but the insertion tool will not work on this small O-ring. There's no hole small enough on it to do it, so you really just have to push it on by hand. But that's very easy to do. Now, the entire kit is complete except for the Pegasus figure, which we'll do later. But I want to point out, now would be a good time to start testing this mechanism. But, this is a huge warning, before you do it, it's really time to give it a nice talcum powder uh, a sprinkle. So I'm going to go into my bathtub and sprinkle a nice generous coat of talcum powder over the entire mechanism. I'm going to shake it everywhere I can. Then I'm going to blow it off and come back and we're going to talk about starting to crank the mechanism. So I've given my model a nice coating of talcum powder. I haven't even really blown it off all of it. You can still see it's kind of looks like it's been dusted with snow or something. Now there's a lot of gears in this mechanism and this thing is not unlike the transmission of a car. So you probably heard that a car needs its transmission needs to be run in so to speak. All of the little gears need to work themselves in a little bit before the mechanism starts to run smoothly and that's what we're going to do right now. Now I'm going to start cranking this mechanism. When you start cranking your mechanism, if you encounter any difficulty in cranking it, do not force the, the rotation. You may break the model. If you put in too much torque, you may snap one of these shafts. So it's important that you don't force anything. So at first, you might want to just run it back and forth like I'm doing now. Don't try to make a complete rotation. Work that talcum powder into the mechanism. And if you have any difficulty in rotating it, you may have to go around to various parts of the mechanism and wiggle them and get everything nice and smooth. Now, as you start rotating the mechanism and as it becomes free, you'll notice that it needs to be worked in, just like I was saying before, like a car transmission. There's a lot of little things that are gonna kind of seat themselves, a little parts, little parts of the wood might need to wear away a little bit before the mechanism starts running as smoothly as you hope it will. And, if, and rotate it in both directions. So rotate the handle clockwise and counterclockwise and keep working it. And as the mechanism gets smoother, now you'll notice after several rotations, it really starts to get nice and smooth. And just keep rotating it and after you rotate it like maybe 10 or 20 times you'll notice that the mechanism starts to get amazingly smooth and at that point you can really blow off all the talcum powder that's remaining. Uh, the talcum powder, if you use baby powder, it'll give the kit kind of a nice smell as well. So as you can see this is rotating really really smoothly and you should be able to achieve a similar kind of uh, smoothness to your to your completed kit. Now that now that it's running pretty well, I'm going to just move it to the side and blow off some more of this talcum powder and then we'll start building the Pegasus figure which is going to go right up there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to construct the newer Pegasus figure. The Pegasus figure was changed uh, around the summer of 2018, so I'm actually filming this in late August 2018. Uh, here's the old figure of the Pegasus model, and um, it, it, it is very <clears throat> mechanically it's identical, but the new figure looks much more anatomically correct, and we gave Pegasus a much more bold look. His tail is bushier, his mane is you know, flowing, and his legs are more anatomical, anatomically correct. The older version to me looks more like a deer, kind of like a doe, and I don't think Pegasus is going to look like a doe. I just want to um, go over the construction of the new figure. It's almost identical, so um, I'll put that in with the video at the end. So if you have uh, the older version of the kit, you'll be able to look at the old version being assembled, and if you have the new version, just take a look at this video. Begin by gathering all of these parts 
and I'm going to start by taking one of the brass screws from one of the other bags in the kit and I'm just going to take the Pegasus figure, this is the back side that has the extension on it, and I'm going to just run the screw through the figure to establish the threads in the hole. Now we've done this before in another spot in the kit, in I think in some of the uh, gears we wanted to do this. This makes the final assembly much easier just if those if those holes already have the threads pre preformed when it comes time for putting the Pegasus figure on the stand and adjusting it we won't have to deal with also having to uh, you know run, you know create the threads at the same time life will be a little easier okay after you form the threads into the uh, Pegasus that has the extension on it let's start by putting the wings onto the figures now the wings were originally put in place using o-rings but I noticed uh, many of the o-rings started to crack after several months so I replaced the o-rings with these little acrylic clips that a little bit hard for me to pick up off the table but these little acrylic clips also work very well then I found a new kind of o-ring made out of a rubber called EPDM and they seem to work without cracking so the kit now has both the o-rings and the clips you can decide uh, which one to use now if you go for the clip let me just take one of these clips real quickly and show you there's a slot in the clip the slots actually a little narrower in the middle than it is on the outside it has sort of an hourglass shape and before you actually mount the wing on the figure you might want to just do a quick practice and slide the clip onto the wing. It should be tight. If it's too loose, you'll have to use the O-ring. If it's too tight, make sure you know you kind of work it in. There's a little tip to the wing here that you really don't want to break off, so don't be careful of that and not break it off. All right, now, having said all of that, let's start to put the wings in place. So here, I'll, I'll grab this figure first with the extension. I'm going to put this wing in and I'm going to slide the plate on. Now since it's sort of got an hourglass shape, it's easier to slide it on on the ends and then you can kind of work it, it in. What I recommend doing actually is at least initially slide the plate all the way up against the body. Now when you do that, you'll notice the wing cannot flap at all. Okay, so now what you wanna do is just pull a little bit, a little bit, create a small gap between the plate and the body until the wing has a certain amount of movement. I don't think that's quite enough, so I'm just going to pull it a little, and I mean a little, so that I have a decent amount of up and down movement. About 30 degrees, I would say, each way. And you'll see the gap is about, mm, I'd say about a 32nd of an inch to a 16th of an inch. Now. Um, having done that, I'm going to now take the wooden spacer and one of these black screws, which serve as a screw and as the eye of Pegasus. I'm going to screw that in. Now, this, this dowel has some threads that have been preformed in it. It's a hardwood dowel. It's pretty hard to thread it otherwise. Now, having done that, I'll just put this figure to the side for a second. Let me grab the other figure and put the wing on that figure. So the wings are mirror images. Everything is a mirror image. If you wanted to use an O-ring, let me just show you how that would go. Same technique. Just slide the O-ring all the way up against the body like this. And again, if you don't, the O-ring's pretty good. It gives you the movement you need. If not, just back it off like we did last time with the plate and put it in. But I'm going to swap out the O-ring for the plate. These plates can be kind of tight, so be careful. So again, it's kind of close to the body, so I'm going to just pull it out a little bit, try to keep it even. That's pretty good motion on both sides. Perfect. 
Now what we'll do is we'll grab the other figure that has the spacer and the extension. We will put the tail here. We will put the cam in this location here. Okay, let's make sure. So that cam will be able to touch the wing. That's how this thing works, like this. And then we will put this body on like this. Just make sure you align the holes. And now you can grab the other black screw and screw this in. I'm going to take the legs that have the little holes in them. Now this is a rear leg, but it's in the front of the model. And this is a front leg, and it's also in the front of the model. These are the ones that the link gets attached to. And again, just like we did with the extension piece, I'm going to put one of these brass screws into the leg and pre-thread it just to form those threads. This is kind of an important step because the final assembly of putting the Pegasus figure on and getting the links on with the whole model is a little bit tricky. So anything you can do to make it better would be good. I know you heard me drop that screw on the floor, so I just have to go and grab it. It's a miracle I found it, because usually when I drop something on my floor, it goes into the twilight zone, I think. I don't know where these things go. I sometimes find little screws weeks later, and sometimes I never find them at all. So there you have it. Okay. We've pre-threaded these holes, and now let's put them on the kit. So let's put on the front rear leg first. That's the one with the hole on the bottom. And first position the tail so that the tail is sort of wa waving in the air. And now find the position that fits about right for the leg to be there. And now if you flip the model to the other side, now these legs should be offset slightly. They're made so that the um, two legs don't don't line up with each other so I'm gonna flip this over find where it seeks want want one to be a little bit the front leg the front rear leg is a little bit behind the, the bottom rear leg now for the front leg position let's tuck the cam into position and make sure that it's sort of touching the wing and now again let's find the front leg position and we will put that here. There we go. And again, the back position. Is made to be a little bit behind the front position. So this is the final positions of the legs. Now, this is the one part of the kit, although the kit does say no glue required, this is the one part of the kit where I do recommend using just a dab of glue. So what I like to do is I like to use Elmer's glue. You could use the carpentry glue, the wood glue, the yellow glue works fine. The um, glue is, the white glue dries clear, so if you're concerned with that, you might want to use the white glue but what I do is I just take a piece of scrap paper I squeeze a little dab of glue and I use a toothpick I position the leg make sure everything is square and I just put a dab of glue a dot of glue right there that's all you need you can put it in a couple places if you want couple places and to be honest if there's any glue that's sticking out you can just easily get it out now you can see that glue is going to dry it's going to dry clear make sure the legs are square when the glue is drying make sure they're not crooked so I haven't glued the rear one yet but for example make sure it's not crooked like that make sure it's up against the body like that and do that with all four legs and then just follow the rest of the video for the completion of the kit
the final part of constructing this kit is to build the Pegasus figure. Now the Pegasus figure is found, or the parts for the Pegasus figure are found in this bag. And let's do what we've been doing for the entire build. And that is to empty the contents of this bag into a bowl so we don't lose anything. Now the Pegasus figure is a lot of fun to build. And one of the things that makes it particularly cool to build is you're going to find out exactly how it works. You might be wondering, well, how do the wings flap and, and how does the whole mechanism work? You're going to find out very quickly, and we're going to start constructing in the very next step. Let's start the construction of the Pegasus figure by gathering the parts you see here. Each one of the shafts, the one for the front legs and the rear legs, consists of two pieces that you just slide into each other like this. Um, and when you slide them fully in, you'll end up with construction like this. So let's do that with both of these. And again, that's what it's going to look like when it's finished. Now, the front. The shaft for the front legs gets these cams, and the shaft for the rear legs gets a tail. So in the next step, let's slide the tail into position here. So all you have to do is basically slide the tail in and center it as best you can. It's going to slide into that middle section of the shaft. And I'm just going to try to get it as close to center as I can. Now these two cams, they double up like this and they go into what will become the front shaft. So let me put these in. It might be better to put them in individually. So let me just slide these in like this. Again, I'm trying to center it on the shaft and basically this is what I'm going to want to end up with the cam slid onto the shaft like this. Okay. We're going to continue constructing the Pegasus figure. Now we've already constructed the front axle and we've put the cam through it and centered it up. And we've also put the tail into the rear axle and we've centered that up. And now we're going to start putting together the actual figure. Now the first thing I'm going to do is take the figure that has the extension on it. And you'll notice if you flip it over, the two holes on this side are a little bit bigger in diameter than these two holes. I'm going to start off by just running this one of the uh, screws that are in the Pegasus bag I'm just going to run this through the, this hole so as to establish the threads on the second half of this extension piece. And I'm going to do that with the other hole. Now the reason for doing this is simply that it allows uh, for much easier final assembly. When we finally have to place this figure on the kit, it will be far easier to do so once we've established the threads inside. Uh, the piece of wood. So once you've established those threads, just take this screw out and make sure you put it back in the bowl that contains the other components of the Pegasus figure. To start off, we're going to grab the spacer. You'll notice that these two screws are black in color. They will serve two purposes. They will serve a purpose of holding this spacer to the Pegasus figure and they will also become Pegasus's eyes. So the first screw I'm going to put it through the hole. It should basically fit through that hole and now I'm going to screw the spacer on to the back of the Pegasus figure. And I'll make this nice and tight. So this is what you should have after you're, you've completed that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of the wings. You'll notice the wings are mirror images. Here are the two wings. I'm going to take this wing and I'm going to slide it into the Pegasus figure that has the extension on it. And now I'm going to hold it in place by taking one of these plexiglass... Um, I'm not sure what to call them. We'll call them clips that will hold the wings in place. Now, if you look at this clip carefully, you'll notice that the hole, the rectangular slot, is a little narrower in the middle than it is on the outsides. So it's much easier to put this on, just angle it a little bit, 
like that and it should fit onto one corner and then you can very carefully wiggle it on to the wing itself. It may take a little bit of effort to get it to slide on because it's a nice tight fit but once it's on work it down into the Pegasus's figure. Now you're going to want to put this plexiglass clip pretty close to the frame but not so close as to prevent the wings from flapping. So once you position the clip, move the wings up and down like this. Now you'll notice the wing is not going up very far and it's not going down that far either. It's because my clip is a little too close to the uh, face of the figure. So I'm just going to push the wing out a little bit. That may have been a little too much. And I'm just going to wiggle it again and yeah I get much more movement now both up and down so you want to basically place this clip so that it's not very tight there's about uh, mm, I'd say perhaps a 30 second of an inch gap between the profile the wooden profile of the figure and where the clip comes to an end so that the wing flaps up and down and I'm going to do the same thing on this side Remember this figure, we'll get the wing like this, and then we will slide the plastic clip into position. And I'm just going to work it again fairly close, and this one is good. It goes up pretty far and down all the way, so that's very, very good. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to slide the front shaft into this hole, and the only thing you have to make sure of is that this cam is above the wing. This part of the wing that sticks out I'm calling the wing tab and make sure the cam is positioned above the wing tab. The rear axle that has the tail can pretty much go in any orientation because we'll be in a position to rotate it around. So I'll just put it like this and now I will place the second half of the Pegasus profile here. You slide the two figures together, line Pegasus's eye up with the spacer that we put in in the previous step and we can now screw the remaining black screw and now the figure is almost assembled we're going to have to put in the front and rear legs on both sides. Now you can see how the mechanism works when the cam comes down like this it's going to make the wings flap. So the movement of this cam will make the wings appear to be flapping and that movement will take place when the front legs of Pegasus is activated by those brass linkages. The, those brass linkages are going to cause the front legs and the rear legs to move a little bit when you crank the mechanism and that should give you the flapping action. Okay, we will pick it up in a minute. Before we attach the legs to the Pegasus figure, let me just point out that this is a front uh, leg and this is a rear leg and this is a front leg and this is a rear leg. Now you'll notice that that one of each of these has a hole in it. So these are going to go on the front side of the Pegasus figure and a linkage is going to be attached to these holes. Now before we mount these legs, I want to make absolutely certain that we establish the threads inside these holes first. So what you really want to do, and this is an important step, I want you to pre-screw in the screw into both of these legs and once you've established the threads, you can then back out the screw and do it with the other leg. Once again, once the Pegasus figure is mounted on the model, it becomes very, very difficult to screw these screws in for the first time. Once you've established the threads inside, it's very much easier to screw the screw in and this final assembly will go much, much easier. Now once you've done that, put the screw back in the bowl and now you can take the Pegasus figure. Now we'll mount the front leg first. Now 
what you want to do is move the cams until they're almost activating the wing. In fact, you can hold the cams down. And with the cams down, you have to place the leg on the cross of the axle in the following orientation. Now, of course, every 90 degrees, this will go in. So you have to make sure you've put it in the right place. Now, the right place is here. In other words, the leg, the front leg is quite extended and the wings are going to get activated. Every time the leg moves like this much, the wings are going to get activated. So make sure you're in this position. I'll put it very close to the camera so it can be seen. Now the tail section, put the tail up into a nice position, sort of about like this. And now also find the position for the hind legs. So this is a good position for the hind legs. Now as the hind legs move, the tail is also going to move with it. Now, once these are mounted, you can flip the model over and it becomes much easier. The, the position of these legs actually aren't important at all. It's more of an aesthetic. So they're offset a little to give the horse a more realistic look. So you'll put it in this position so that this, this leg is slightly lower than this leg. Let me just make sure we have enough light on it. You'll see it just makes it look a little more realistic so that the legs aren't perfectly lined up. And the same thing will be true here. We will find the right cross. Same sort of thing. The legs don't line up perfectly so it looks a little bit more realistic. And now the Pegasus figure is complete and it's ready to be mounted. So once again, when the legs move a little bit front and back, the wings are going to look like they're flapping. And when the rear legs move, the tail will go with it. Okay? It is now time to mount the Pegasus figure. Now I have the video camera looking just at the top of the Pegasus stand. The Pegasus figure, the extension stick is going to go behind the Pegasus stand and it's going to mount just like this. The two screws you're going to use are these 256 by 5, no I'm sorry, 256 by 3 eighths of an inch long brass screws that should have been in the bag with the kit. Now it's a little tricky. These holes are a little bit bigger in the front and then they're threaded in it behind. So it could be a little tricky to get this in. So as I had mentioned before, pre-threading the hole is going to make it a lot easier to get this started. So once you get this in, it will be nice. You'll notice there's a slot in there which is going to allow us to adjust slightly the height of the Pegasus figure to get the perfect action with the wings. Now once you get these screws started, you can start to, to snug them down, but don't make this very tight yet. What I would do is in fact keep one screw loose, put it in the middle of the slot, and just snug down one of the screws and really do not make it tight. In fact, it's, it can still be slid up and down. So I know I can make it just a little bit tighter. Okay, it's just now stopping. So I'm, now I'm going to stop tightening. The remaining bag in the kit contains the two rather beautiful brass links, some washers, and four brass screws. Two of them are longer and two of them are shorter. These ones are three-eighths of an inch long and the other ones are a quarter inch long. Now, we're going to put the links now on the model and it's very easy to, to drop the links while you're putting them on. So I'm going to just kind of warn you. I'll show you my technique. I'm going to take one of the links right now and I'm going to take the longer screw, the 3 8 of an inch long screw, and I'm going to put it through the linkage like this. I now I'm going to take two of these washers 
I'm sliding one on. Now these are tiny little washers, so they're very easy to lose. But I'm putting two of them on, just so you can see that. And now I'm going to screw one of these on to the pulley right here. Now remember, we've already run a screw through that, so we've established the threads. Now, this is a little tricky. If I do, if, what I'm going to probably do now is lay the model down. So let me reposition the camera. I've leaned my model up on the bowl so that the wing in the back isn't touching the table. And remember, I put two of the washers on. I'm using the longer screw. So now I'm going to flip the link over and screw it into this wheel right here. Now these linkages go diagonally, which is kind of an unusual mechanism. So we'll just, and incidentally, don't tighten this screw all the way down. You can snug it down and then back it up a little because we want this to be free to rotate. So do not tighten this screw. Uh, now I need to fish out the other link, the other long screw and again two of these washers so I will put it what I did before I put the screw through the link then I put one washer on and then I put another washer on then I flip it over and I screw it on to this wheel here now again it goes diagonally so This is a little tricky because these screws are pretty small and you've got two spacers under there. It's easy for them to fall off. But just take your time and remember, I, want, I don't want to tighten this screw down all the way. I want these links to be loose. It, it, they can even be quite loose. Don't even come close to tightening them. Now, the next thing is we will attach the links to the, to the Pegasus's legs so I'll do the front leg first now this one only gets one spacer so I'm gonna first put the screw through here this is going to be a bit tricky I'm going to slide the spacer underneath hold it there and rotate the link until it's right over the hole and again do not come close to tightening this screw once it enters the wood, you can turn the screw just maybe two or three turns, and you'll have enough of it inside. Now this link is going to go on top. Same thing, I'm going to put the screw, make sure the camera can see it, try to get a little more light on the rear leg. I'm going to put the screw through the link. The spacer will go underneath the screw. Then I'm going to slide the entire link right over the leg. And it's kind of good that it's over the bowl because even if I lose, you know, even if the washer falls out, it'll fall probably into the bowl and everything will be fine. And again, I'm tightening this screw but not coming close to tightening it. I want to keep it extremely loose. I actually forgot the final step, which is adjusting the position of the Pegasus figure. And now it may not need any adjusting, but the way you do it is you crank the mechanism until the front leg and the rear leg are at their highest positions, and that's where the wings should also be in their highest position. So you can rotate this a few times, you can even rotate it backwards, and just find that spot. Keep looking at these front legs. And when they, when they start to go back down, you know you've gone beyond it. So right there is the, that is the maximum extension of the front and rear leg. And at this point, I really would like to have the cam as far down as it can go. So the way you can do that is you can loosen the screw and you can move, if you move the Pegasus figure down a little, Let's see, if you move it down, that's the equivalent of making the cams rotate further, the wings up. So if I move it down, I don't want to go crazy, but I'll move it down a little bit so that the wings are at their maximum height. And now I can snug down both of these screws. And 
that is the finished model. And now we'll see how it looks from a distance. Okay, here is the completed kit. Feel free to give it a good dusting of talcum powder and then blow it off and let's see how well it works now. Now as you see the action of the kit, you'll see that the crisscross linkages are activating the front legs which are in turn making the wings flap and the rear legs are making the tail go up and down. You'll notice the four bar linkage mechanism is keeping the Pegasus stand perfectly, you know, horizontal, or the Pegasus figure is being kept perfectly horizontal. And you can just watch all of the gears in action. You can go around and calculate all the gear ratios, and you can show your friends and just give this thing away as a gift if you want. And I'll tell you something else you can do. If after you put this together and you've played with it for a while and you really think you got enough out of it, if you're very careful, you can completely disassemble this kit, rebag it into those bags that came with the kit, and give it away to a friend and have him build it. And you can just keep passing this kit on from person to person and just let everybody enjoy it. So I hope you enjoyed building this kit. It came out really well. I told you it would come out smooth and everything, and it's just tremendous. So signing off.